says this is KD7 RPP Kilo Delta 7 Romeo Papa Papa calling NAISS. Can you hear me? Over. NA1SS. NA1SS. This is KD7 RPP. Can you hear me? Over. NA1I this is KD7 RPP Kilo Delta 7 Romeo Papa Papa calling. Can you read me? Over. Not now, we'll start having. NA1 SS. This is KD7 RPP Kilo Delta 7 Romeo Papa Papa calling. Can you read me? Over. Kilo Delta 7 Romeo Papa Papa. This is NA1 SS. Go ahead. Good morning, Astronaut Anderson. Your signal is strong. On behalf of the students at Pueblo Magnet High School, Jefferson Park Elementary School, Drakman Elementary School, and Pister Middle School, thank you for the privilege of this extraordinary contact, and thank you and your fellow astronauts, along with the entire NASA community, for the work you do and the benefit you provide. Are you ready for your first question? Over. Appreciate the kind words, and the space station is ready for questions. Over. Mark, KE7KSE, how many times have you orbited the Earth since you boarded the ISS? QSL, over. Well, Mark, I'll give you a math problem. We orbit 16 times a day, and I've been on orbit for 105 days, so you can figure that one out, over. Davina, based on your present space experience, do you believe there is human life on another planet, over? KSD, what does it do on the ISS? QSL over. KD7 RPP, can you read me? Over. Michael Guevara, I would like to know if you can use 
cell phones in space. Over. Uh, I expect you probably could, but we don't have that capability up here right now. Over. Antonio, what well, was your state of mind when you left Earth? Over. Well, I couldn't believe what I was getting ready to do, and I was really sad because I was I had to say goodbye to my kids and my wife for a long time. But other than that, I was excited. Over. Tierney, what is your sense of awe and wonderment of nature and outer space? Over. Well, Tiernan, the Earth is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's, it's beautiful when you're on the ground, but it's even more beautiful when you're in space sailing around every day, over. Yes, I mean, what is something you took for granted on Earth that you're not missing? Over. Well, I think we don't have really ice cold drinks, which is, is something I miss, and we really don't have fresh food, and I also miss that, over. Julio, is it difficult to sleep in space? Over. No, Julio, I'm having a pretty good time sleeping. I, I usually get seven to eight hours every night, and I don't have any trouble falling asleep, over. Reyna, how do you use enhanced perceptions when you're in your spacesuit? Over. You know, we do it exactly the same way with our gloves on, and they're just kind of stiff. So if you imagine your hands being really stiff, like when you're cold, it's just hard to move switches and buttons, over. No, I mean, I don't think so. Like we said before, I sleep uh, eight hours or so every night, and I sleep in on the weekends. So I think they're pretty normal for me, over. Cynthia, how much psychological pressure do you experience when you're taking a spacewalk, over? Cynthia, I don't think I experienced any. I just thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever done, over. John, KE7KSC, what do you do in case of the power failure? QSL, over. Well, John, if we have a power failure, we have lots of procedures we run, and we have to figure out how serious of a failure it is. If it's really bad, uh, we might have to abandon the station, over. Juan, is it possible to build a settlement for people to live on in the moon? Over. Absolutely, Juan. I think we can do it. And who knows? You might be one of the first guys there. Over. How do you, Ernesto, how do you communicate with your family? Ernesto, I can send emails every day, and I can also talk to them with what we call an internet phone about the satellite, like, sort of like a cell phone. And uh, also, I get a video conference with them every weekend, over. Uh, we could have internet in space, but NASA doesn't want to let us have that because they're worried about hackers, so we don't get to, over. How does space travel change your life and what will we do when we return to Earth? Well, it's made me understand a lot better about how our world's composed, and when I get back to uh, Earth, I think it will make me be a better steward of my environment, over. Jesus, how do you know when to sleep or to rise if there's no day or night aboard the ISS? Over. <laughs> If the ISS is rotating, how are your antennas directed direct or pol pol polarized? Well, actually, they have something we call gimbals on them, and that just basically means they can move in all different directions so they can point to the place they need to point so they can see the uh, satellites over. Shaywan, who or what inspired you to become an astronaut? Over. Uh, actually, the Apollo 8 astronauts inspired me to become an astronaut, and um, after that, it was just pretty much me. Over. Gilbert, K7, NR, how is your sense of taste different in space? Over. I haven't noticed anything, Gilbert. Uh, I like the food that we have. I don't really notice if something's more spicy or less spicy. I think it's kind of bland, but other than that, I think my sense of taste is the same. Over. My name is PD. What do you eat in space? Over. Well, I really like uh, lamb with vegetables. We have lots of meat and potato dishes up here, and we have some really good desserts like chocolate pudding cake. Over. No, Tiffany, we haven't really looked, but we did get some pictures of Venus uh, a week or two ago, but we haven't discovered anything new, over. Abram, is it true that by reaching a very high speed in an extremely short amount of time, we can create a rip in the space-time continuum and go back in time? Over. You know, I don't know, Shayla, so I'll leave that one up to you, but if you figure it out, I want you to give me a call, because I'd love to do it, over. Myra, how does it feel to be going in space, over? Mine is lots of fun. You can uh, do flips and turns and spins, and you can fly fast, and you can fly slow, or you can just hover and not do anything. It's really cool, over. Okay, that's the end of the questions. I didn't think we'd get through all of them, but we did. Uh, the kids did such a great job. Uh, do you have any questions for us, over? Well, I just want to tell all the kids it's been my honor and privilege to talk to the folks at the Pueblo Magnet High School at Tucson, Arizona, at the U.S. of A. 
and uh, I hope that you guys all do great things, and I'll see you in outer space someday. Anyone that says over. We want to thank you again for your time. Your investment in the students will no doubt reap compounded reward for entire lifetimes. This is uh, KD7 RPP. Clear. Represented. And one other announcement, we are going to be applying for a partnership with NASA. They have some seeds that were germinated aboard the last space shuttle and they brought them down to Earth. NASA is considering, thinking of colonizing the moon. They got to grow food. So we're going to submit a proposal where we're going to grow, we're going to be one of the control groups here on Earth. We're going to do the best job we can. We'd love some of the other schools to be involved as well. So I think the time is right. Also, if any of your schools are interested in amateur radio, we will be more than happy to send our wonderful, magnificent licensees, uh, student licensees over to talk to you guys. We have lots of equipment that has been donated to the club that we could also provide for you. So I'm excited. I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am. And uh, now I can see my wife because I haven't seen her in three weeks, but that's like the point. And, uh, and uh, I want to thank you all for coming. This was truly magnanimous. There is cake in the back. There is cake in the back and, and drinks. And I invite you to please talk to our students, our licensees, and the radio club members. They're, they're great people. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Let me.